That was one of the stranger Talladega races we've ever seen. So on Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series made their return to Talladega Super Speedway, where they conserved fuel all day. The EPA would have been ecstatic with what they were doing. And then just at the end of the day, a race broke out at the very end, which saw Michael McDowell appear to be on his way. Before we get to that, we do have a commercial coming up here. It's from our sponsor, Oakley. Don't buy Shady Rays like a poor, buy Oakley's for all of your skiing, snowboarding, and dirt bike needs. Wherever goggles are sold, find them at your local retailer. So when it looked like Michael McDowell was about to win his first cup race of the season, going back to back, pretty exciting for him. He goes all Ernie Irvin, swerving Irvin, makes these huge blocks that we haven't seen this side of, well, Jace Joseph Newgarden doing it at the Indianapolis 500 last year. He gets turned off the nose of Brad Keselowski, who kind of just finished him off, goes up, causes chaos behind him. Tyler Reddick ends up going all Ron Bouchard in a sense and stealing the win. While everybody is focused on Brad and Michael McDowell, it was Tyler Reddick. It was always Tyler Reddick that was going to win this race. That's what the script called for, after all. Reddick ends up winning the race. Michael Jordan gets to see one of his cars win in person for the first time. Of course, 2311's won with Tyler Reddick, Kurt Busch, and Bubba Wallace, but Michael Jordan's never been there to see one of those wins. He finally gets to be there to see one, and I think that's a really cool moment for him. He was ecstatic. He was jumping up and down. You would have thought that he just won an NBA championship. And as Mike Joy pointed out, on this date in 1998, he won his eighth NBA scoring title. Now he's standing in victory lane at Talladega. Life comes at you fast and in different ways, but I think he looks like he's having a great time, and he's a great ambassador for the sport and a great owner in the sport. So cool to see him get to have that moment. He picked up Tyler Reddick's kid, uh, which is going to be a great photo for his kid to have in the future. But yeah, everything about that was cool. Unfortunately, what wasn't cool was the broadcast most of the day. And it lacked a lot. So we complain about the Fox broadcast a lot. And I try not to rag on them too much because it's a difficult job, right? And you can't appease everybody. They also have to, you know, make their advertisers happy. They have to pay for the broadcast somehow. And that comes through commercials. The Talladega Spring Race is typically the second highest rated race of Fox's portion of the schedule. So they sell a lot of ad space for this. And as Michael Cohen can tell you here, how many commercials did we see today? 50 times? More. 100 times? More. 200 times? More. 500 times? Probably. Yeah, it was a lot. And the perfect example of how many commercials there were was at the end of stage two, right? With six laps to go on the stage, they go to a commercial. And you're like, okay, it'll be side by side because why would they go to a full screen commercial with only, you know, the last few laps left in the stage? Wrong. We're fools for thinking that because they went to a full screen commercial. So they come back from commercial. They go right into a live read for credit one. And then they go right into a sponsored replay segment for pods for like biggest mover of the race or biggest move of the race or something along those lines. And then they come back and show us the final two laps of green flag racing for the stage right back into commercial once again. Super frustrating day for that. But I understand. I don't love it. There's got to be better ways to do this. And I'm willing to help out, Fox. Just give me a call. I think we can maybe find some solutions for this, possibly, maybe, please, God willing, we can do that. And then you have Mike Joy, and Mike Joy used to be really good in the booth, but he's definitely lost his edge a little bit, because multiple times, he says weird things now, he makes some bad jokes, there's Richard Petty, number of laps left in the race, that was odd, and then... He also has the moment of being like, oh, the 99, that's a costly pit stop for them. No, it was a genius pit stop for the 99 at the end of the stage because they knew they were going to get the wave around. So they pitted with three laps to go, got fresh tires and fuel, still got the wave around as well. So they didn't have to come in with the lap down car. It was a smart strategic move for them. And the broadcast just didn't see it, which again is super unfortunate as well. Something interesting finally happens after the entire package is riding around three wide, saving fuel six seconds off of the pace. Something interesting finally happens. Of course, they're at commercial. Christopher Bell Rex, they don't come back from commercial. Remember when they used to come back from commercial? It was exhilarating. They would be like, we're back live at Talladega. Chaos has broken out here, and there's cars sliding over the racetrack. Now they come back, and they're like, oh, a car crashed. We're going to sit back, kick up our feet. Something happened. You can figure it out if you want to. We'll get to it maybe eventually. If you want to see a replay, you can find it on social. It's so frustrating at times. It's maddening. But yeah, the broadcast certainly wasn't the best that we've ever seen on Sunday. And even at the end of the race, this big wreck happens. Michael McDowell causes a gigantic wreck. You have Josh Berry getting his rear end jacked up like Lance Strolls behind him in China. You have Corey LaJoy does a barrel roll, is on his side wall riding 
Like he's Ross Chastain, even though NASCAR made that move illegal. It's a joke. And Fox is like, ah, we'll get to a replay eventually. Here's what happened. You can't actually see anything. And then you see an onboard of Corey LaJoy, and you're like, oh, okay, that's what happened to Corey LaJoy here. It's just, I hate how long it takes for replays to come. Obviously, they have to tell the story of Tyler Reddick winning. I get that. But at the same time, we don't necessarily need to see Tyler Reddick just like constantly yelling, yelling to yell. You can show that in a replay. We want to see what happened, what the big wreck was at the end of the race. So, yeah, there wasn't... Let's talk about the actual race. I get this race probably like a 72. It was fine. It was a C. It was mid. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. Not the best thing. The Gen 7 car doesn't really race well on super speedways. And that's highly unfortunate. I think that there's got to be something better to do. They have to be able to try to create a package sort of like what they had at the end of the Gen 6 era. Maybe not getting runs that big, but they had to do something. Because for the most part... When they're not riding around saving fuel three wide all the time, which everybody's complained about them saving fuel. They've always saved fuel one way or another. They just used to do it riding around single file. Now they're doing it three wide because they're all just really riding off the pace. So they make it look entertaining, even though they're not actually doing that much passing per se. I really was waiting for somebody to go all like rabbit and hare type of situation here or tortoise and hare. Rabbit and hare is literally the same thing, dummy. Uh, but, like, if you saw the clip that went viral back in January of the Chinese uh, female short track speed skater, she took off at the start of the race. Typically, they all kind of skating around in a pack, and then in, like, the last five laps, they go crazy and all try to win. She took off, and she got all the way back and then just got to the tail end of the field, didn't lap them, just on the tail end of the field, and then rode there and when, won the race, basically calling all their bluff. Like, oh, if you want to get up to me, you now have to make up the entire track because I'm already here. I was expecting somebody to do that today in the cup race instead of riding around with the fuel saving to just go and see what happened. The Toyotas had a bit of a strategy that was going to play out like that. So they pit. Now they're able to go full bore the rest of the race. They don't have to save fuel at all. And it caught other picker or other crew chiefs off guard because a couple of them keyed up the mics of their driver and they're like, yeah, we're trying to get a plan together now. Wait, how did you not think this was going to happen at some point? And all the Toyotas had to do was stay in line. Stay in line. You're going, a Toyota will win this race. Obviously one did, but like they were going to ensure themselves a good victory if it went caution free. And all they had to do was not wreck. And then they wrecked. The 42 hits the uh, 23 who got into the 43, turned the 43 head on into the wall. Eric Jones uh, hit kind of Dale Earnhardt style. He was complaining about his back uh, to the medical crew. He gets out of the infield care center. He's talking to Regan Smith. Seems to be okay. And now he went to the local hospital after the race. So hopefully his back is okay. Uh, so that's a scary moment for him. That wreck, though, collected the 43, the 23, the 42, and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin spun out coming to pit road where he touched a bit of water. I made a joke about it on the internet. People were not happy about that. They're like, dude, there's water there. Didn't you see it on Fox? I'm sorry. I was in between trying to watch both the IndyCar race and the race on Fox and the NASCAR race. It was just, it was a lot going on at once. So that happens, takes out some heavy contenders there. So that left the 40, or that left Martin Trex Jr., Ty Gibbs, and Tyler Reddick to all fend for themselves out there. And they did just that because passing is really, really hard in super speedway racing now. Not like it used to be. So essentially, those three Toyotas kind of rode on top together on the second lane. And it was just a battle between the 34 and the 45, just kind of trading the lead back and forth, back and forth. And nobody really able to get in front of the other one. The third lane did start to make some moves. Kyle Busch, SVG, a couple of the other Chevys were making a lot of headway up there. They got all the way up to basically about third in line for both the uh, second and bottom lanes. And then Ty Gibbs decided to jump up because he was going to lead that line to victory. And boy, did it fizzle out like Napoleon uh, going to Waterloo because it just absolutely tanked. He screwed the entire lane over before marriage even. And went straight to the back and ruined it for everybody. So then you're left with these two lanes on the bottom. Brad Keselowski put on a masterclass in super speedway racing on that last lap. He shoves Michael McDowell off into the corner, gets him way out in front, then drags the brake back, gets a big push from the 10 car of Noah Gragson. And he's going to make his move on the front stretch. He goes high. McDowell goes up to block him. Brad turns back underneath him. What had him? Brad had him, was going to win that race. And then Michael McDowell comes down. He was already wrecking and then just kind of gets finished off by the six, causes a big wreck behind them. Unfortunate ending to the race. But like I said, this race 
didn't have a lot to write home about. BJ McLeod did lead twice on speed. BJ McLeod in that 78, unsponsored, Chevy Camaro, drove all the way up to the front, was leading this race twice, and both times Fox went to commercial. So he did lead, I can promise you. He was in the lead at some point. There were a couple of funny moments as well in this race. Kevin Harvick unintentionally had a funny line where he's like, as these laps continue to tick by, the less and less you can trust Brad Keselowski, which is hilarious because I know what he meant, meaning that like Brad's eventually going to move out from behind the 34 and try to win this race. But also, Brad does have a history of like turning people. Um, so I thought that one was an unintentionally funny. And then you also had a funny moment between Shane Van Gisbergen and his team. Obviously, SVG comes from New Zealand and Australia. Metric system. So his spotter is spotting him and telling him how many feet in between the cars and whatnot. And SVG keys up the mic and he's like, give me car lengths. I don't know what feet is. Makes sense. And then the, his crew chief, you know, radios up to the spotter and he's like, for reference, a meter is three feet, Joe. And he's like, all right, great. That's good information to have. Uh, just, un- again, unintentionally funny. Very funny moment uh, for them. SVG looked really good on a super speedway, though. So uh, I don't think it's going to be too long before we see him full time in the Cup Series. Potentially next year. Not potentially. Uh, so, yeah, overall, really fun race. I did another funny moment, real quick, was uh, somebody was watching the Cup race in Germany. And his, the tweet reads In Germany, the German commentators actually joked about that. The call was something like, like we said, the stage in, now it's going to get exciting. And just like that, the Americans go to commercial. So much for building suspense. Even the Germans know that the broadcast isn't good. So uh, at least it made me laugh. I saw some fans from Talladega when I did a TikTok live on Sunday night. And they were like, oh, great day at the racetrack. And honestly, when I was at the Daytona 500 earlier this year, I watched the race from Pit Road. Not, this is not a brag. I'm just telling you where I watched the race from. And I thought it was a really compelling race from where I was at. When I went back and watched it on TV, not so much. And I think that's kind of the difference here. The broadcast isn't making the race seem as good as it potentially is. Although the package is not good at super speedways right now. They certainly have to do something to fix that. At the end of the day, wasn't the best race I've ever seen. Wasn't the worst race I've ever seen. Just wasn't a great race by any means. There's still work that needs to be done with this package. Uh, but it is kind of what it is right now. I'm not necessarily sure if NASCAR is willing to make any changes as they continue to try to make changes to the short track package. But for now, it's what we have, and that's really unfortunate. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the race. Uh, Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.